Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS with me and the nerds here. Um, hope everybody's having a good week. Listeners, uh, everybody who will be seeing this as well. Um, we're right now on season four, part two, which is episodes nine through 16 of the Clone War. So some good storytelling points before we get going here into this. Uh, let's let DP let you guys know where to find us at. Nerdcyclopedia.com, people. You found all our platforms there at Nerdcyclopedia on Instagram, Twitter, and also on Facebook. Make sure that you're leaving us some feedback at Nerdcyclopedia. Make sure that you are subscribing to all of our um, podcasts on all of our platforms on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, uh, iTunes, um, uh, what, I, uh, tune in wherever you hear your favorite podcast, wherever you're listening to your favorite podcast, Spotify, we are there. And also, uh, if you're on Facebook, make sure that you are joining our Carbonite Bounty BS Facebook group. It's a great group, got all memes and everything, and love you know getting everyone's feedback on the show and also on other things too, Star Wars related. Um, make sure that if you are watching us on YouTube, you hit that subscribe button. So anytime that we're on, you know that we're on. Appreciate that. And like I said, guys, uh, welcome to the show here. Some interesting plot points. Um, we'll just dive right into it because, I mean, this is an interesting section. Another good section. Seems like these middle plots of of the Clone Wars um, seem to be really they get the juice out of the, uh, you know, out of the tree, so to speak. So um, I know, Hitch, you were really animated about some of the things and some of the points. Nick, do you want to lead us off as far as what you're Oh, man. For yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I really, really, really love this set of episodes. This is the definitely the best set for me so far. And I know I came in really positive last time when other people were negative, which was a real switcheroo for everybody <laughs> that probably <laughs> watches our shows. Uh, I stayed really positive. The Umbara set, the Umbara storyline, it was really, really a high point for the whole series for me. I mean, it had so many complicated pieces of the plot together. It had a real, like... Um, man crimson tide vibe to it where it's like when is when is rex going to take control over this this guy and and the and the climate like the way they they resolved that action was so so interesting and, and there were many many fist pump moments too i i think sending darth vader against the space confederacy really really was a great idea because who who can you hate more than slave owners honestly like, really that's the people that you can hate and we have a whole empire of them that are coming back uh I really enjoyed that set of episodes as well. Really give the Jedi the moral high ground for once, especially after seeing them seed it in Umbara. Uh, this whole this whole plot that's being that's now up in the air at the end of this set with Obi Wan going undercover is really interesting too. And it's Obi Wan doing that investigator thing he did in Episode Two, so a little callback to that. Uh, I really, really, really like this set of episodes. This is the first set where I felt like I was watching. Like it could sit right next to one of the mainline movies, in my opinion, and be and mm. really be welcome there. A really, really excellent set of episodes all the way all the way around. Yeah, what are your thoughts, Ken? Uh, same. Uh, this was a really good uh, set uh, story set. I like the uh, uh, Krell. So I got a question: Krell is who in what relation to Dax? Um, is he? Is he his older brother? Because it's the same. It has to be, right? Same same species. Is, are they related? I couldn't find anything on the internet about it. But, I mean, there has to be some relation between the two. Which Daxter Jackson. Might be why the, maybe the bond, yeah, the bond with the Jedi and Dax. I mean, there was, a, and Krell's kind of a connection there. You know, that, that, that just kept occurring to me. Um, but I really like the, again, more of Anakin and Dooku facing off squaring off um excellent fight scenes well choreographed um, and and i think there's even a step up in the uh the art i think in the art department it's a little step up with uh, some of the space scenes were a little more elaborate i thought than uh, in the previous episode but i really like this uh this set can't wait to see how it ends i tried to stop at 19 i think that's where we stopped i was like yeah. i'm not gonna go any further <laughs> yeah. so i'm excited yeah. to see how the whole uh, ties up yeah, I agree with Ken. I mean, I kind of wanted to go. I I asked for or text text you guys to say, can we go a couple more episodes to finish out the arc so we can see what happened. But um, but yeah, I, I concur with you know all you guys love these this this great you know set of episodes. It was definitely down on the first set, you know. Um, um, so coming into the set, it was a really good you know sway in like the whole you know evolution of what's going on in this particular season here. Krell, oh man, I mean, he was such a uh, the 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 guy that you love to hate, 
you know, the antagonist, the antagonist, you know, to the clones or beloved clones, you know, you don't want to mess with our clones because they're going through so much. We get so much character development out of them. We hate it when someone, you know, um, um, you know, um, puts them down or, you know, uh, just, just makes them feel some sort of, you know, some type of way and be mean to them. And that's what Krell was doing. You know, he was being just a, a belligerent, you know, um, general, you know, had no reason in sacrificing all these clones, um, when the clones are brothers and they, they wanted to, um, you know, fend for them, um, not fend for themselves, but, you know, take care of the, you know, each other and everything. So to have them take down Krell, uh, was a very good, as, as Hitch was on, you know, fist pump moment for me, um, I was happy that that complication of him being a Jedi general um, and commanding that army and everything was put in there because, you know, he he was questioned on why are you doing this? Um, and he wasn't taking either side, but, you know, he was saying eventually he's probably going to end up going with Dooku <laughs> because he felt that's going to be the winning side. I mean, it was it was classic you know, wartime, you know, decision making and everything. So I was I was happy about that. We got to see a little bit of Soka's people. So I was I was um interesting where she, you know, she she came from and a little bit of her lineage. So we got a little bit of that. Anytime that we get back to Mandalore, I'm on it. You know, so love that section. And you know, seeing a death watch, I thought we was gonna get um, you know, some 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 good helmet, you know, taken off of everything. And I, I we got the um the dark saber again. So I was happy to see that back. Um, how did he, how did he get the dark saber? <laughs> so that was a question. Um, and what else? Oh yeah. And um, uh, it was the, the, the end arc to me is good, you know, but it was an eye roll moment from, for, for me um, fa- of Obi-Wan faking his death to Anakin. Um, it's sort of like a, a way to feel like a, a feel like the episode you, you know how you have like those episodes and like you know a 22 episode season where it's a filler episodes or a filler set of episodes where they can't really think about uh, they can't really think of certain plots to go with so they choose this to go with and that's what i really thought of the whole you know obi-wan changing into you know the enemy and everything um but it, it is you know sort of a mystery because he is going undercover and it's a kind of unique way of developing that particular arc and I'm interested to see where that goes. So overall, great set of episodes. Yeah, I concur with you guys as well. I mean, I thought this episode, this set, was another step up. I mean, like I said, these middle arcs, it seems like to be the really meat of every season. I mean, it's just like it really takes it to another level. Um, and this, like I said, the big thing I found is, you know, interesting on this is you guys alluded to it is I love the kind of the battles that Dooku and Anakin have had over the times it just makes even you see that final battle in episode three more you know I guess palpable because you can understand it from the first fight I guess on the beginning of the Clone Wars to where he's kind of learned what he does and has evolved as a Jedi makes it more similar because my big gripe and you know we'll get into three is how fast he kills him and how easily he does it doesn't seem like real enough to me or like you know I don't know for somebody be that you know, in tune with the lightsaber, I just thought that was not the best of things they could have edited, but I, I can see now that maybe Anakin's become more adept at his fighting style, and it makes that scene, you know, I, like we said, this is a nice bridger, gap bridger, so it makes that now, to me, when we watch it and, and continue on with that, more kind of palpable to see why he, you know, kind of taking him down so quickly, even though he's grown in power so much. A lot of foreshadowing into the future here. All of this anti... The the Jedi being shot by the clone is such a watershed moment for the entire series of Star Wars. And and he, that the, that they framed it this way. And and it's just so... In, like Imagine we're watching this in season four of this show and a stormtrooper shoots a Jedi and we're all just like, yes! Right? Like, we all did that. Mm-hmm. All of us. Uh, that is... A really incredible accomplishment that you have to look at the body of this work and say that they set this up from the beginning from that first set of episodes and i remember uh, that are from our first episode on the clone wars dp said look it's this this episode with all the clones is it and 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 man when you lose one of these guys like like hard case right when you lose one of these guys you really feel it uh it's it's incredible to think of this show as almost like a band of brothers for Star Wars. Yeah. Great, great, great. Yeah. Great. These guys are like we call them brothers, they're clones. And who is who is General Krull but Captain Sobel? Right? 
he wants you to do it his way or whatever. And then Captain Sobel never admitted that he was trying to get people killed. He just was an incompetent boob. Uh, <laughs> but Krell at least had the, the decency to admit it. And man, like wa- watching what they had to do to like bring him, like bring him to heal, like to hunt him down and, and watching them think creatively and problem solve, which is the thing we were, we were sold that they were going to do in episode two. They're going to think creatively to do problem solving. Droids can't do that. I right. keep coming back to this this Umbara set, and even just the way it looked, the way it sounded was so excellent. You know, it's such a unique idea to have it just completely dark lit, and then have this villain be have four lightsaber blades basically rolling at the same time. Like just even that looked excellent. The clone carnage in that scene where he's cutting and cutting them all in half, pretty much. You can see the yeah. damage. Man, this is really, really, I mean, really excellent. Uh, Real, like I said, I can't, I can't really praise it enough. Uh, you know, Ken, you talked about the art. The art really is excellent in all of these. The designs are all good. Even I called uh, the first wolf, wolf uh, Zygerian. We see, I called him Space Fraser of the Space Confederacy or whatever. You know, it, it, these, everything looks excellent. We are, we're sold these character moments in ways that make them make sense. And every time Anakin rescues somebody, I feel like I'm going, yeah. You know what I mean? Every time there's an action scene, I'm now really invested. And even a, an arc, if you want to call it, you know, sort of filler, Cad Bane <laughs> shows up in this arc that's filler. Uh, yeah. The prison, and look, the prison, that yeah, guy, we've yeah. been missing him. Boba yeah. Fett shows up. So we got Boba Fett and Cad Bane. And I mean, and you're right. If we're looking at these arcs, this is the worst one. It's the it's the filler one. And, and really, that speaks to the quality of the rest because the remainder is still that good. Right. Yeah, I like I was, we got more of the clone uh, like the personalities. Like I love the scene where the clones were shooting the clones. They're like, no, 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 wait, yeah. take yeah. off your yeah, the, yeah. Our people. Fist, I mean, fist, fist pump moment. <laughs> that was really at, at first. I was like, wait, what, what, what the hell is going on? What are they doing? Oh, I get it. Um, that scene and the firing line, the the execution scene. Yep. Two really strong moments where all of a sudden. The clones are becoming stormtroopers. Mm-hmm. Like they're becoming more human and less of less machine like. And they're, be, you know, they're like really thinking for themselves now and taking a stand. I, I think those two, those two things were really, uh, that was interesting to me. Um, and then the, they were just done so well. Like, the, the, but just the, the art and the way they did the storylines and the storyboards, I'm sure they, they must have spent hours going over that because the personalities really oozed full forth i mean you really once they took their helmets off and they saw oh, i've been shooting at my brothers you know uh you know you could see the the pain in their faces so it took it, it had to be at least um usually we get like two or three episodes three episode arcs at the most from like these first you know few seasons the krell thing least it appeared to me it lasts like four or five episodes and the way they develop the um the the the, the decision making that the um clones the uh, had to to do had to make in order to go against Krell because I mean they're trained to you know follow the Jedi you know follow their Jedi generals and everything to follow orders I mean that's what that's what they're trained to do so it took, to, a, while. It took a while yeah, yeah. and they and the, and the show did the work to make us believe that um these clones to make it believable that these clones were going to betray their um their general you know who they were um you know taught to 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 follow orders you know with but he was just doing so much and you know um they had to take their they had to take their stand and and they really did the work to make us believe that that was going to happen and that was a true that was a true way um for the clones to react so I, i definitely applaud the show for taking his time um, instead of just doing it, you know, one or two episodes, and then that was it. I also love that they tried to arrest him and it went wrong, which seems like a, a <laughs> thing to pay attention to. <laughs> trying, his things can go wrong when you try to put someone under arrest, and and they're very adept. The policy, <laughs> follow policy and procedure. Yeah, bring bring the chosen one with you, right? Bring him, bring him along. You don't want to try to do stuff like arrest somebody without about the chosen one. Uh, Man, I, I I just can't say it. that set of episodes. Even the even them, like making their way that the the space fighting thing. I I, I think from this set where they they're flying the Umbaran um, fighters up into the uh, up into the space battle, 
man, mm -hmm. like oh, you yeah. said, the scale of these things, the scope of them is so big and you see these fleets show up and now they're like, you can see the march of the military technology. Like what's showing up is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and crazier and crazier and crazier. And it's making sense as this, you know, as Anakin's hair keeps track of the time, right? As we see, <laughs> as we see the difference between episode two hair, and episode three hair, we know about where we are in yeah. that, in that three year span. So it's, it's nice to see it. as things are turning <laughs> around. Now the troopers are more specialized. They're fighting in worse places. Like it's, gets ground down a little bit. The naval stuff has turned into a little bit more variety into the ships. So we have Y wings. Now the, the new Y wing bombers, they come in and they're like, yeah, Y wings. Yeah. Really, really, really like that stuff. And then to see, to see it change flavors so fast from this bleak, you know, grimy, what's the Republic? What's the point? Or what are we fighting for? Right. For it to flip right. on a dime into this is exactly why we're fighting right now. <laughs> like for it to do that is, is also a real accomplishment in the writing because I believe both. I believe it's, I, I, what did I say in the text? It's like, we're watching two shows. One, this propaganda film right. put out by the Republic and the other, a film mm -hmm. about the clones where we see what it actually is like. And it stinks. Mm -hmm. And it's so, so cool. That's a great pickup. Great, great point. Great point. I mean, two different pair shows in parallel with parallel storylines, um, giving you like the um indication of what what is going on what's really going on in the banner field um versus you know how the politics how, how the politics are you know um behind the scenes and everything so i mean it's it's oh man i mean we we get a stretch of five episodes with no anakin and <laughs> no ahsoka no obi-wan and still you know we're still like you know into it and um you know hyped about everything that's going on i mean that's a testament to a really good good writing on the show Yep, and Palpatine laughing all the way to the bank. Like he, I mean, that's, it, that's an evil guy right there. <laughs> every scene, every scene he's in, even if it's just for, I think he wasn't in, in this sequence of episodes just that for, much. But when he is, yeah, just for like a couple, it's you know that he's the one that's mm -hmm. actually writing this mm -hmm. story on both sides of the coin. He had, and and we talk about it every every. Uh, every podcast about this, this i mean we're seeing this he's he's advanced he's he's got the personality he's he's charismatic he's very intelligent i mean is he a, is he part machine or something i mean he's calculated everything there's, there's no no empathy no, with the guy none no, whatsoever no mistakes he hasn't made one mistake anytime there's a like oh you're doing that wrong he he covers himself like the uh you know, when he wanted them to, what, in uh, episode or season two, uh, he wanted to destroy that that dragon to get the, the venom so he could make, they were like, no, 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 it's a protected creature. No, we are just testing on this thing. He had an answer for everything. Mm -hmm. He's covering himself. Beautiful character. I mean, I, I have way more respect for him. Like in Return of the Jedi, he's just crazy just insane old he's he's probably at the end of his wick you know he's just done <laughs> but now you're seeing him as he's youthful and and powerful and calculated it, it's it's interesting he's only and he was only in for a few minutes just a little a smidge just enough to come so in I, you know, and say well anakin yep. your master is dead and nobody trusts you better go on a murder spree and then anakin goes i will and then <laughs> i will and that's it and he's gone and all of a sudden lightsaber blade comes out and there's death <laughs> everywhere I mean, that's awesome. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I feel the same way as well. I mean, that, that last episode, it kind of, we left on a cliffhanger on 16, especially when, um, you know, Obi-Wan was on the run as, as the bounty hunter. I thought that was really cool. Dif different take on, you know, kind of how they viewed people as far as bounty hunters. And we've had the discussion with the Mandalorian <laughs> as far as how they view people with helmets on and things like that. So mm -hmm. I, I think that was pretty interesting to see, you know, the, the how obi-wan kind of faked his own death and and it kind of did the things we talked about being more of the investigative type jedi and just not only just at this point a symbol of war or you know a soldier and did you really like that when obi-wan was getting all beat up and maybe he was dead i mean that was not that made you happy you were like oh man <laughs> like i said i, I like this obi-wan and i'm i'm very excited i'm very excited for this season to come out when his show comes out on disney plus so I think they'll, especially with these the different people writing this. I think we'll see a whole different side of Obi Wan than we've seen in the uh, the movies we've seen. A more a, a nastier side of Obi Wan. You're like you're like done with the yeah. soft. 
I, I am. I'm not. I'm not like the soft one. Maybe they. Maybe they knew exactly where Obi Wan was, and they were afraid of him, so they just left him be. And that's why Vader stayed away from Tatooine. He just knew. Nah, I'm not going out there. Got to face of death. Right. Perceptive. So where do where how, how did my man get the um the dark saber? And I guess we can probably answer that um in the next segment. Yeah, huh? we should probably go to break. Yep. Enjoy the promos. They're good this week. Have a fun time. Mortal Kombat! That's right. This week on the Nerd Psycho comic flick show, Mortal Kombat. You played it in the 90s. Now you can watch it in the 20s. And that's right. They're going to be fighting. They're going to be ripping people's spines out. People are going to be frozen and shattered into a million pieces. And if you don't watch, we're going to send Scorpion to your house. And he's going to tell you... Get over that's here! Right. NCFS this week. And now, it's time for everybody's favorite, Nerd Cyclopedia Theater, starring the nerds. Let's join them now, as Hitch has just got home from work. Honey, I'm home, and you'll never guess who's coming to dinner. It shut up, honestly. And listen, everybody, why don't you guys come over to Carbon Out Bounty BS, which is our Star Wars channel. We talk all things Star Wars, whether it's comics, movies, television shows, animated series like currently we're doing the clone wars and we're on season four so hey everybody if you're into star wars content come over to carbonite bounty bs all right guys and welcome back from the intermission here and uh just before we went to break uh, dp posed us with an interesting question so dp you want to follow through with that question again how did i forgot his name but how did he get the um the dark saber i don't recall him having a dark saber the last time we seen it um, and I think it was episode two. I'm sorry, season two, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't remember. Is that... <laughs> Who had it? Uh, probably killed for it. Who had it at the end of that? Um, oh, man. This is a terrible Star Wars podcast. We're supposed to know this stuff and be angry about it. <laughs> What's the matter with these guys? We've, we've all been I mean, out. goodness gracious. We've been busy enjoying the media we, we, and not we, paying we. attention to the facts. What a terrible bunch of nerds we are. <laughs> Wait, I'm looking it up and I don't care. There we go. There it is right there. Right here. The dark saber hey, in the flesh. I mean, I, I, mean, I knew Pre Vizsla had it. Yeah. Hold on. Um... So does this thing just like bounce around? I'm remember I'm the casual uh, the Star Wars well, guy well, and everything. Well, if you're if you're looking at it from a perspective of um, the Mandalorian TV show, the way that the dark sabers pass around is it's only one in combat. Mm -hmm. So originally it was from a Mandalorian Jedi, um, then it was lost in <laughs> combat and it's kind of bounced around. So um, yeah, the history of the dark saber it's kind of it's kind of long depending on what you read, but I know that you'll see, you know, I won't spoil anything, but you'll see other people with it. Um, but yeah, it's interesting on who gets it, how it goes around. But um, the story of the Dark Saber is really interesting. I wish they went into more depth of that as far as, you know, other than like internet stuff you can read. I think it'd be even a good novel to, uh, to read because you'd see it in some of the other books in the Star Wars lore. But as it, we it, see. It, it would appear to me that this this saber is like one of those like swords like the like the um what the the um the, like the he-man yeah. store like or yeah. like a, a thing that someone has to be worthy well, know you know Excalibur. to have the story you know? uh, yeah, <laughs> the lady in the lake you pull it from... that's how they got this sword someone of just threw it threw it at him out of a like yeah the sword, yeah, of, sword omens. of omens <laughs> yeah. damn yeah. Thunder. That's the ultimate sword. The sword of Thunder. Thunder. Dagger <laughs> war. Is it not a dagger? Thunder. You never know. You get him excited. The sword gets big. So, I like, but I like the dark saber now. It's it's so interesting because I love seeing it because it was in the Mandalorian at the end of season one. It's such a it's such a great tie in. Yeah. So now every time I see yes. it, it's a part of this lore that is mentioned at the end of at the end of the Mandalorian season two, when um, the moth says. Um, Oh, yeah, now he's got to deal with that. Like, right? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you got to deal with the fact that he's got the Darksaber. Ha ha. And it's like his gotcha. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's so interesting to see the Darksaber show up in the hands of somebody who can't use it every single time. They never, it's never somebody that is like, like going to be good at using it <laughs> against the Jedi, which you can't win a sword fight against someone that knows exactly what you're going to do next. You can't. It's impossible. Uh, 
man, it's so so cool when that thing shows up. Yeah, we um yeah, like I said, we got we in this set we got to see a little bit of Soka's background. I did like the um the 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 slave, like the um you know that particular episode was it one or two episodes that was when they went um when Anakin went down there with with Ahsoka. There's a couple. Um, there were a bunch of her people down there yeah. too, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So yeah. That must have really tore her up inside because mm -hmm. they, we're not here to release slaves. Qui-Gon said it. We're not here to free slaves. Mm -hmm. We're we're here to 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 repair our ship and we have a mission. So we're not here to, to do this. That must have really, really got her. You know, maybe they didn't develop it so much. Maybe we're gonna see that later, but she she really wanted to help those people and she couldn't. So, well, I mean, you could you could tell in her actions even before that, you know, she got to um to her people and everything, you know, how they were how the slaves were being treated. And, you know, she was making actions and Anakin just kept telling her to, you know, step back and everything. You know, this right. is this is our mission and this, you know, what we got to do. Um, I'm really seeing the development of Ahsoka to the point where I think at some point she she's I don't know if she's just going to um with, with this fall of the Republic and like the 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 dissemination of the Jedi. I don't know how, how long she's going to last with these people. <laughs> you know, she's just going to get to a point where, you know, dealing with, um, and, and the way, you know, Anakin's going and everything. I mean, things are just slowly, but surely falling apart. Well, she didn't really stay with them. Right. So when we saw her in the in Mandalorian, she was full grown. She oh, yeah. Yeah. worked yeah. out on her own. Yeah. She even ran cross paths with Thrawn. So, that alone tells you that she was kind of rogue. Mm. Well, she was outcast by the Jedi Council yeah. at some point. We'll get into it in the future, but yeah, she's outcasted. She's ousted by the Jedi Council. And what a, and what a right. time like, to get kicked off that basically ship. Basically being Anakin version too. Like, that's like getting yeah. kicked off the Titanic the night before it hit an iceberg, getting kicked out of the Jedi Council during the Clone Wars. You know what I mean? Like, goodness gracious. <laughs> just before yeah, he died. Like, the night before, yeah. it's like, you know what? I'm just going to get in this dinghy. I'm not, well, well, what are you? You're going to spend the night in a dinghy? I don't know. It won't be so bad. You know, you, like it's not so terrible. Uh, I, I'm so excited to see what they do with her because we know, again, this it's these call forwards now. And it's weird that we saw It's because I saw it in this order. Obviously, it's not the chronological order. It isn't the release order. It's just the order in which I encountered it. But all of these <coughs> concepts are echoed later in The Mandalorian. And you can see where, like, you can see where they're all pulled. And so now it, it's, like, retroactively making me enjoy The Mandalorian more, which is such a mm -hmm. weird thing to feel. But now I'm like, oh, right, right. that's why they did that. Oh, that's why they all hate droids. Oh, that's, you know what I mean? It all makes sense now mm -hmm. that there's these things that are that were callbacks that I was missing. And I liked the show that as much as I did. And I and I was missing all these callbacks. And now, I mean, now I'm going to get to watch well, the that, seasons again. It's really going to be cool. That's, that's a testament of how good The Mandalorian was because they could have easily, you know, Filoni and um, Favreau, they could have easily just... Um, um, made the show in direct connection with you know everything they did in the Clone Wars to where you had to watch the Clone Wars in order to watch Mandalorian. We got a consistent story with just the man, you know, Mando and the um the child um and his mission to deliver the child to his people and everything. Um, that's that's all we needed. Everything else was like an extension of that as far as the people he encountered and like, you know, the just the, the hijinks they had, like, you know, on the road and everything. You didn't need to watch the Clone Wars in order to get what was going on in Mandalor you know, in the Mandalorian. Testament it, it, of great writing. It was just yeah, it was, I was just gonna say it was just that good. And he completely when they when they started that, I'll bet they said, you know, I bet they said just that we want to make this a standalone. So if no one saw anything else, they mm -hmm. would see this and then they would say, there's more. There's mm, more. Yeah. This? Where yeah. is it? And then they find they'd find Carbonite Bounty BS. <laughs> podcast. Thing they needed to know about everything else. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's yeah, the point of yeah, this. Yeah. Well, we're doing it. You got to yeah. We want you to know what we think. We're doing the work for you. That's right. We put in. <laughs> we watched that first season. We'll tell you which ones you got to watch. It's three or four episodes to pick up on. But we did the whole thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're welcome, everybody. You're welcome. Yeah, we yeah. stay all night watching all. Those <laughs> I watched episodes. cartoons for hours for you people. Hours of cartoons. It's not what I would have been doing anyway. Where's, where's the payback? <laughs> what do I get for watching all these cartoons? Hey. <laughs>
<laughs> it's, it's definitely good pleasure and enjoyment. I was reading a little bit of background. I didn't realize that um, this aired on Adult Swim. So it was actually yeah. in the um, in the adult category, which a lot of the themes and everything are so adult, you know, oriented, um, you know, from killing and um, 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 individuals committing suicide and everything. I mean, that's just something that you're not seeing in like, you know, modern day cartoons or here in America, at least, you know, um, or animated, you know, the, uh, programs and stuff. So for this to air on like, um, you know, Adult Swim makes a whole lot of sense because I thought it aired on like the Disney Channel or something, you know. Oh, oh no. Did, you had to search. You had to you had to know when it was on because they were seven minute. Mm -hmm. They were seven to eight minute. Blocks. oh yeah the way they scheduled it yeah 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 i had to search it out and i think that's why i never really caught on because i mean i don't got mm -hmm. time for that I'm not <laughs> wait like give me a flat nine o'clock or oh 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 you know or, or 30 time you know right i'm busy i got i got stuff i'm doing I don't have to, like wait for a commercial break and then another commercial break and then they're gonna mm -hmm. air this seven minute thing with this guy going anakin skywalker in the in the you know, whatever, but you know, I just, I couldn't hang with it, but now I'm settled. I have time, you yeah. know, I can, I, I can, I, I have Blu-ray uh, discs I can watch, you know, I now I have Disney plus the star yeah, Wars Disney stream plus. plus. Yeah. 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 I have it. Yeah. One thing I did want to say, you know, um, as far as we you know what Hitch was talking about, as far as the Mandalorian and things in that show, retroactively looking even better now, <laughs> you know, versus when we first seen it, um, you know, this show, the, 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 even the, um, like the Mandalore, like the, the Mandalore, you know, parts in that show, um, it made, it made me more, way more interested in watching this Clone Wars stuff and just revisiting the whole Star Wars thing, which is the reason why, you know, we're pretty much doing this podcast. Um, so, you know, thank, you know, <laughs> thank you for the Mandalorian to make me more interested in this universe. Because coming as a casual viewer, I was not as enthused about it as you guys were, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it took the Mandalorian to 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 get me a little bit more. I'm not gonna lie. When I went to see uh, Rise of Skywalker, I fell asleep. <laughs> I, I did. I fell asleep during that movie. I my I was nodding my head in and out. Um, and you know, uh, but I think um, watching all this, it'll it'll game it'll give me perspective. The uh, the and just to just to briefly talk about it, the um when Count Dooku does those energy things out of his hands and everything, mm. and um Ray does the same thing in Rise of Skywalker, and people were cheering in the theater when she um. did that. <laughs> <laughs> Those are real Star Wars fans. Story we're not gay. Geek. So we're gonna gatekeep. We're gonna gatekeep on what you're allowed to applaud in a Star Wars movie. Really now. I don't know that I'm willing to do that. I don't know that I'm just willing to willing to do that to somebody. Oh, you can man. clap at anything you want. What's dude. going on here? Oh man, no. I, this is a call for words. This is this is like it's so Star Wars is interesting because it was conceived as this serial, this series of serials, and this is essentially the the thing that the event that those serials were calling back to, you know, it's, and, and some, some of the things in literature, you know, you revisit the places and, 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 um, the settings sometimes from the stories, you know, when you're a child as an adult and they seem very different. And what's nice about this series is we're revisiting places we visited as children in this exact series and they're coming back to them as adults. So when we go to Mandalore the first time, it's this very cut and dry plot. We want peace. We don't want peace. Right very cut and dry we come back and now it's much more slippery as to who's in charge of what and who's good and who's bad mm -hmm. and that is the sort of ambiguity that makes stories more interesting and and it's great to see them find that depth here without having to go anywhere else just had to wait and let the characters simmer out right. it's, it's it's a slow burn of a show <laughs> the clone wars seasons one through four and so far i mean think about all the main characters we've got backstories on that weren't even really main characters i mean we've saw ahsoka we saw her people. We've had the, you know, Chewbacca. We've seen Wookiees in mm -hmm. this show. We've seen, obviously, we've had our background as far as all the human characters, Anakin, Obi-Wan. Uh, we've got right. backstories into the huts. I mean, this show has done so much to fill in. I even if we go to some of the Sith, you know, you have Asajj. She was a night sister. We get her kind of, you know, prequel story. There's the malls, you know, and they were slaves to the night sisters there's so much in these four seasons yeah, we've learned yeah. that you literally can learn so much from a 
even you, a casual fan, that I, you can do nothing but appreciate. I mean, they've tied this in so well and developed so much in literally 22 minute blocks that, you know, all you can yeah. do is applaud what they've done. It's it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, definitely pulls you in. I mean, it's definitely a well developed universe. I mean, if um George, you know, being an overseer of this all, you know, all of this and everything during the time that he before he sold, you know, Star Wars to um you know Lucasfilm to Disney and everything. I mean, it's a really I I, I still got to get a testament, you know, to the guy that created it all. You know, it, it's a really well. I can see why Star Wars fans are who they are now. You know? <laughs> we're talking about Super there's so much of this connective tissue and there's even all these connections back to episode one <clears throat> i mean anakin literally says i want to come back and free all the slaves he says that in episode one and he does that he, you know what i mean he performs that task here in this set of episodes and you can see that anakin is in trouble because he has this connection like he can't let go of connections they say that in episode three that's what leads to his downfall too much empathy he has too much empathy. He's Darth Vader, and he has too much empathy. It's 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 such an interesting tragic flaw for a character who is literally famous for choking people out without much of a thought. So the character development we see here where he's now willing to do what it takes to get the job done, we see him rage out a little bit at both the death of Obi-Wan Kenobi and the slavers. And man, you can really see the... The anger and self-righteousness binding together here in a way that you miss if you only go from episode two to episode three. We can safely call Anakin Skywalker the U.S. agent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's our John Walker Easter egg for everybody out there. <laughs> for those of you that are fans of both things, Marvel and Star Wars, both of the things that exist in the world. Marvel. Right. But just closing out this uh, set of episodes, guys, once again, um, you know, final thoughts on these as we uh, convene into our part three, which will be 17 to 22. So a short run, but a, definitely an interesting run and a, a, a nice cliffhanger to, that's going to end this uh, season for everybody. So any final uh -oh. thoughts on this this middle set here before we um, lead out to the finale of season four? We're, we're chugging along here. I mean, we're almost, you know, we're about to be on, you know, season five after this, this set. Right. So, I mean, I thought, I thought this was going to be like a, a long journey, you know, it's, it's going by pretty quickly <laughs> it is, you know? and, and it's good. I, I think it's, you know, when we started this and I was, I was kind of listening back, I was really sort of like, I don't even want to do the Clone Wars. <laughs> like, I'm really sort of embarrassed about that. I've really turned around by this point. So by now, this is now, I'm, this has now increased my enjoyment of all the other Star Wars media. Like, that's how good it is. And I was like, I'm going to pass. So it's it, this has been the biggest thing I've been wrong about in Star Wars. And and that is that is saying something, because I've been in Star, into Star Wars for a very long time with some very pedantic other people that met, met well with, that meshed well with me. So, uh, like, I one time lost a Star Wars Trivial Pursuit game because... Um, I said, uh, oh, that's a, like, it was like, look at this uh, clue and what what uh, concept art is this? And I was like, oh, that's a super battle droid, but it was just a regular battle droid. And it was ruled that I got it wrong by my friends. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me ask you a question. I played trivia, Star Wars Trivial uh, Pursuit uh, myself. Did you now, when I played, it was me against six people. <laughs> <laughs> so, because that was the only way we could truly fairly do it right because i mean i'm just saying i'm not I mean, we were all we're all pretty uh versed in nerdism and science fiction and star wars so how did you play well Pitch? were you was it you and a team well i'll get nostalgic were, because you because this is this is a story that took place at a, at a at a this college apartment i lived in and tom is one of our um one of our uh real like stars on our message board he's into all our stuff he lived with me and so when we would play star wars trivial pursuit there would be three or four people playing but it always come down to between me and him and i would use i would win a lot of the time but the thing is that he knows a lot of stuff so like you can't like I, you, you i couldn't just like steamroll him right i couldn't do it but i would i would win i would win sometimes he would win sometimes one time i lost because it was one of those look at this concept art and i said super battle droid and i lost very very funny. You lost. Uh, he'll remember that, I'm sure. That's one of the all time 
Got it. Yeah, he'll he's he's doing a comment. Right I'm sure. Now. I'm sure we'll yeah, have yeah, a comment. He's, he's... It'll, it'll be like just some. It'll just be some some uh, trash talking <coughs> Star Wars trivia. And he probably could take me now. This is not an open challenge. <laughs> I don't dispute that. Uh, but I just wanted. I did want to say that before we moved on because that apartment that apartment building got torn down this week. So sad. Sad times. Getting old. All my stuff's getting torn torn down. That's what I have to say. I'm done. Memories. Um, you know, you got those. Yeah. Definitely, and we'll have a lot of memories to close out for the season four, guys. So, like I said, uh, we'll be finishing up season four with episode seventeen to twenty-two, and that'll be our finale of season four, heading into season five. So, inching along closer, only three more to go. So, I appreciate everybody listening to us as far as well as you know watching our streams. You know, please keep giving us that feedback, as everybody is saying, and and uh, giving us the commentary on all our social platforms. We really do appreciate that, guys. So um, until next week, uh, guys, once again, for me and the nerds, this is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Yeah, I'm still real bitter about that Trivial Pursuit thing. I'm like not... I'll bet I, you I, I'm like, That's been a long time. <laughs> that was like, you know, maybe pre-episode three. And I'm still there. Encyclopedia.